Family Theater presents Patricia Neal, Jean Cagney, and Glenn Langan. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Gene Cagney and Glenn Langan in The Triumphant Exile. To introduce the drama, your hostess, Patricia Neal. Thank you, Gene Baker. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. Once, when told he was a genius, Robert Louis Stevenson said, what genius I have is for work. This is true in part, for he spent his entire life learning to write better. But I think there's also genius in the fact that he never lost the vision of his childhood. Else, how could he have written the stories you and I have thrilled to when we pretended to be pirates digging for buried treasure? Or kidnapped by wicked old uncles and forced to sail in ships on the high seas? These are the stories that will live forever, but so will the beloved Scotch author who wrote them. Family Theatre takes pride in presenting Glenn Langan as Stevenson, Jean Cagney as Fanny Osborne, and Carlton Young as Lloyd Osborne, who tells the story of the triumphant exile, the story of Robert Louis Stevenson. Upon a mountain top, looking away to the sea, is a grave beside a grave. In the distance is heard the roar of the surf and the wind blows. The climb is steep, and it would be unlike most visitors to the island of Samoa to make the climb. But now, as I sit here upon the summit, my thoughts are of this man whose grave I face, and of the woman who sleeps beside him. And suddenly it seemed only yesterday, and before me stretches the new green forest of Fontainebleau in the south of France. It is spring again, and the year is 1876. We'd come all the way from America shortly after my father died. We stayed in Paris for a time, then came to the inn at the village of Gretz, because Mother wanted to paint. Painting, she said, could help her to forget so many things. Mama, what's that? A tiger lily. I'm painting a tiger lily. It doesn't look like one. It looks like any old flower. Oh, run along, Lloyd. Mother wants to be alone for a while with her thoughts. I knew my mother was grieving, but I was too young to understand. An artist colony is no place to amuse an eight-year-old boy, and I was restless. I wandered along the riverbank until I came to where there sat a funny-looking man, wiggling his toes in the water and writing in a small notebook. He was tall and thin, with long golden hair, a tiny mustache, and very shabby clothes. I thought he must be terribly poor. Hello, laddie. You got your toes wet. Oh, so I have, lad. <laughs> you must be Lloyd. How do you know? Because your mother is a lady of mystery. What is she? Mm, painting a silly old picture. I have nothing to do. Uh, then come sit beside me. I'll tell you a story. What kind of a story? Well, let us see, buddy. Ah, look yonder, through the trees. It's just an old building tumbling down. Uh, 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 uh. Nay, that once was a castle belonging to a noble knight. Until one day... Pirates came from far off Spain, and sailing down this river, reached the forest of Fontainebleau. 
They were vicious. Instantly, I idolized this storyteller because there was nothing I liked better than to hear an exciting tale of adventure. Later, he took me for a ride in his boat, the Rob Roy, and we paddled upstream until we came to a spot opposite to where my mother sat painting. A uh, Luli, as I called him, suggested we anchor his pirate ship and kidnap the lady of mystery who was obviously struggling with canvas and paint. Mama, Mama, I'm a pirate, and I sailed up the river to kidnap you kidnap and... Kidnap me? Oh. <laughs> and who is... Uh... Well, this is Lolly, Mama. He oh. talks real funny, but he tells wonderful stories. Hello. I hope Lloyd hasn't been bothering you. Uh, to the contrary. He gave me an opportunity to meet you. Oh? Well, let me introduce myself. I'm Fanny Osborne. Aye, and you're from America. And you have two children. One who is a school in San Francisco. Yes. And you are the lady of mystery. Mystery? Oh, then you know all about me. Certainly. Why? Why? Because you are the only woman in the colony. Well, is this unusual? Unusual? Do you know you're the only woman who I ever come to Gretz? No. Huh. Obviously, Americans are uninhibited. Oh, no, I never thought... But this colony is for artists. But I am an artist. Huh? Let me see. No. No, no why? you are not an artist. Why, you... But you do remind me of that flower you are painting. The tiger lily. Delicate, lovely, a passionate color. <laughs> for a man so young and a stranger, too... You really are quite personal. Well, when one admires a lady as beautiful as you, what is age? And besides, I'm 26. Then you're just plain rude. So I might be. But a man in love can't afford to be rude. In love? Yes. A tiger lily. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. Who are you? Louis Stevenson. Oh, of course. The Scotchman who arrived just last night. Aye, with me cousin Bob. We made the inland voyage down the river between here and Paris. One of you is a writer and the other's a painter. Aye. I heard about you at the inn. Well, since we've heard about each other and since we're so well acquainted, how would you like to go canoeing? Oh, I don't think that I... Oh, no, yes, I... Mama, you'll have fun. And Lily can paddle if good. If you refuse, we'll have to kidnap you. <laughs> no, this sounds too dangerous. All right, Lloyd, come. We'll carry the Lady of Mystery off to our ship and then we'll put her in iron and chains. Down in the hole? Aye, aye, laddie, until we've reached sea. Then what? Then, madam, we'll mock you walk the plank. <laughs> It was good to hear Mother laugh again. Young as I was, I couldn't help noticing that Louie and she were attracted to one another. And as the summer months passed, I grew to associate them together. And in a childish way, I think it made me very happy. Then one day I came upon them in the garden. They were alone. Mother at her easel, neither of them heard me. Because of shyness, I suppose, I hid behind the gate. Funny, I, I, I can't tell you how much this summer has meant. What inspiration you have meant to me. You're a good writer, Louie. You don't need me for inspiration. Uh, you're wrong, Fanny. I need you, but I have no right. No right? Did you not know why it is that I came to the Sous of France? No. Well, the doctor ordered me to leave Scotland or die. Oh, Louis. It's my lungs. I can't stand the fog and the cold. So I'm an exile from Edinburgh with only tears for the past. Oh, I'm so sorry, Louis. I despise my life. Do you know what it is, what it is like to be away from your family, your country? I... I know what it is to be away from... someone. Oh, Fanny, forgive me if I bring you back memories. You never asked me about my husband, Louis. Yeah. I buried him not long ago. Oh, Fanny, I'm sorry. So you see, we, we both have our crosses to bear. Uh, oh, I, I, I know this is too soon to declare myself, but Fanny, I love you. You're very sweet, Louis, but... You must forget all about this. I, I, I think you care for me a little. A yes. little. Yes, I... I, th I think I do. Fanny, I'm proposing to you. I know I shouldn't have, but I am. Louis, I think it best to go away. Well, then I'm coming with you. No. No, it's better I go alone. My heart still belongs to... Well, there are so many things I must forget. And I think it's best I try to forget them alone. Mother told me our money was almost gone and we were returning to America. I was happy at the thought of going home. But when the time came to part and we stood at the dock near the ship that was to carry us away, 
A sudden pain struck at my heart. I thought we would never see him again. He looked so alone standing there. This is goodbye, Louis. I, I, I wish you would let me come with you, Fanny. No. No, it's better to think of this parting as final. Oh, you know I know, Will. Oh, don't you see, Louis? I must face going home. I have a responsibility to my children, and I must be able to make a new life for myself. But Fanny, I, I want to be part of that life. Perhaps someday if it's meant to be, but now there's still too much that ties me to the past. Do you see that, Louis? I... If I should ever send for you, then you'll know that I've freed myself of all memories. And you'll also know that it's, it's you I love. I live only for that day. Work hard, Louis. Time will pass. Why are you safe, Fanny? But all my prayers are going to be when you and I can be together. You must write and write and write, Louis. You have great talent. I, um, maybe someday I'll write something worth real. Sometime. Someday you'll write many great stories, Louis. This I know. And suddenly you'll be famous. The whole world will know the name of Robert Louis Stevenson. <laughs> We sailed for San Francisco, and when I was 11, we moved to Monterey, a sleepy old Mexican town down the California coast. What a quandary my mother was in, I'll never know, or the agony that was in her heart. She would sit for hours in the warm sunshine, dreaming perhaps of happier days in Paris and Gretz. Then suddenly a mysterious excitement began, caused by a lot of letter writing. My mother waiting impatiently for the post to arrive with more letters, and one morning with a curious new brightness in her eyes, she said, Lloyd, Lloyd, I have news for you. Luli is coming. Louis. Oh, <laughs> the Louis. Oh, there, oh, there Myers, I plumped what I was going to say when I saw you, but... Oh, the... words aren't important. No, no, only us, Fanny. We're together again. I'm here, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me look at you, laddie. <laughs> How tall you've grown. I got my own boat now. We can race in it, Louis. And play pirates. And dig for buried treasure. Louis. Mm. Oh, you've grown so thin. Hey, Lloyd would say I'm a bag of bone. Oh, gee, he'll make a skinny pirate. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll fatten you up soon. Now, where are you going to stay? I didn't know. Well, there's a house on the hill owned by Senor Gortez. Uh? And you'll love him. He's a nice, picturesque old Pisano. Uh, and, um, and you can rent a room there, just for the time wait, being. Yeah, yeah, but finally, I, I have waited a long time. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, Louis. Um, Lloyd, dear... Will you go out into the garden? No, 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 no. Let the lad hear what I'm about to say. That you, you may not like it, laddie, but I hope you will. I, I'm going to marry your mother, Lloyd. What, laddie, what do you say? I couldn't utter a word to save my life. I was speechless. I knew I should say something, but what? At last, my hand crept into his, and a sense of happiness came flooding over me. From that day forth, Robert Louis Stevenson became my bosom friend. Now as I sit here upon the summit, and those years are behind me, I realize what a driving will he had, as if time were growing short and everything might not be accomplished, that the things he had to write might never be written. <laughs> Louis had been in Monterey only two days when Senor Gortez brought us the terrible news. Senor Osborne! Senor Osborne! Senor, open the door! Open the door! What is it, Senor? Oh, you must come quickly. What has happened? Is, is it Louis? Senor Stevenson, he's very sick. You mean he's had an attack? Si, Senor. Is he dying? I do not know, Senor. I must get a doctor quickly. Come, there's no time to lose. Oh. It was the hard journey and lack of food that caused it, and the cold Monterey fog. It had all been too much for Louis, but with mother's strength and courage, she nursed him through, and soon the day came when he was able to sit up again. Fanny, give me some paper on my pen. Now, Louis, you've been ill. You need rest. Confound it, woman. I have got to write. You will write, but not until the color comes back into your cheeks. The amateur immigrant. I will call the story. And... <coughs> oh, it's the fog coming in from the sea. I'll close the shutters. Hey, hey, that, let's see. The room will be dark and unfriendly. It's not a very nice room, but, but as soon as you're well and... There. Then we'll be married and then... Why, Louis... Louis, what's wrong? I, 
I received a letter from my family in Scotland. They have stopped my allowance. Oh? What will I do? Is it because of me? Because I'm older than you? No, no, no. Because I have two children and I'm American. No, no, funny, you know it is not. No, Louis. It's easy to understand their way of thinking. Uh, if they only knew you. Some prospect of a husband I'm going to be. How will I take care of you? Well, if you can't take care of me, I'll take care of you. We'll go to some place high in the mountains where there's lots of fresh air and sunshine and, and no fogs to make you ill. Oh. It's just what you need. But my fanny. Will you, will you not, Miss Monterey? It doesn't matter. Nothing matters but getting you well and keeping you happy. <laughs> Here we are, Louis. This is it. This is Silverado. And there, there's the bunkhouse we're to use. Our new home. You kind of mean it. There are no windows in the place. Gee, it's falling down. <coughs> <laughs> well, this is it. Because there's the mine right behind the house. It fits the description all right. Dean Ghost wouldn't have lived here. Louis. Louis, it really is pretty awful. Aye. Nothing but dust and sand and weeds growing through the floors. Where's the furniture? Oh, what difference does it make? We'll make furniture and windows and, and we'll have fun cleaning it up. The only thing that matters is that you get well. Oh, what would I do if it weren't for you, Fanny? You, you, you've saved my life already. Well, I'll boast to say that I don't think many wives are better loved than I. But then... Few wives have a genius for a husband. Uh, I'll write about this, Fanny. What do you call us? Um, squatters. Good. I'll write about the Silverado squatters. That was the beginning of our living the life of gypsies. For as soon as Louis completely recovered, we set sail for Scotland by invitation of his parents, who had forgiven him when they learned how near he was to death. It was then in his home in Edinburgh that the idea for a story came. A story that was to bring Louis fame and fortune. The morning was rainy and I, hard up for amusement, was drawing a large map of an island. Well, lad, and why are we here? A map? But it's not very good. Yeah, certainly it is. Here, let me have a joke. Now, this is Spyglass Hill. And this is Rum Coal. And now here we'll put three red crosses. And above the map, we write Treasure Island. Gee, now it really looks like a map. Pirates. Buried treasure. A man marooned. Where are you going with my map? <laughs> That was the beginning of Treasure Island, which later Louis said he wrote for me. And it was the beginning of a new life where it made travel possible again. As gypsies, we wandered to England, France, and finally back to San Francisco. Louis riding as we roved, and from these travels came many more stories. Kidnapped, Black Arrow, Prince Otto. My friend was a famous man. But in spite of his refusal to be an invalid, his illness forced him to bed again. And one night, Mother and I were awakened by loud cries from his room. Oh, Louis! Louis, what is it? Why did you awake me? I was dreaming a fine bogey tale. The next morning, we were given orders that he was not to be interrupted even if the house caught fire. For three days, he wrote without stopping, sitting up in bed, covering page after page. Then at the end of those three days, he called us to his room and read his first draft of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Well, and what do you think of it? I think it's wonderful. Good. And you, Fanny? I, uh... <clears throat> it could have been a masterpiece. Could have been? Yes, dear. You, uh... You missed the point. What point? Well, you made it a mere story. Aye. You took a good man whom you've called Dr. Jekyll. You gave him a secret drug and he becomes a bad man called Edward Hyde, a murderer. I know all this. Well, don't you see it, Louis? This Dr. Jekyll should never become another man. Mr. Hyde is simply Dr. Jekyll's split personality, his other self. Why, 
We're all Dr. Jekylls and Mr. Hyde's. Two persons, one bad and one good. But most of us overpower the bad with the good. Else we'd spend most of our lives in prison. I have a right to entertain, not to preach. Perhaps so, but you could really make this a great You're story. You're wrong. It's already a great story. My mistake was in reading it to you. Now, I'd like to be alone, please. <laughs> It was the first time I'd ever seen him angry. We went into the parlor and I turned to my mother, but neither of us spoke. She sat pale and desolate, staring into the fire. The room was dead silent. Then, after what seemed like hours, we heard him descending the stairs. He was carrying the manuscript. He crossed the room and threw it into the fire. Louis, what are you doing? Uh, uh, well, uh, you were right, Fanny. After I reread the story, I discovered I had Missed the point. Ah, uh, Fanny, can you forgive my temper? Uh -huh. I, I'm afraid the Mr. Hyde came out in me. Certainly, dear. My darling. Because of your wonderful help, this story will be a masterpiece. The case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde was his most famous story. But with it came more serious illness and nearly cost Louis his life. Once again, he was ordered south. I remember him saying... Keep me well until I'm 40 and I live to 90. We sailed to Hawaii, the Gilberts, Australia and back. Then because Louis and Mother felt they had found the place where they could be truly happy, we hired natives and built a rambling house at the foot of Mount Bahia and we made Samoa our home. Ah, uh, Fanny, it is the Garden of Eden, paradise. Yes. Oh, look at the flaming hibiscus dancing through the jungle. Aye. And the coconut palms bowing their heads as if in prayer. The beauty reminds me of you. You remember long ago the tiger lily? Delicate, lovely, a passion of color. Oh, how could I ever forget? This is a land for artists, free souls. Where we can live like kings in a house that climbs a hill. A beautiful, proud hill. Funny. Will you climb it with me? I have something I want to show you. Oh, it's... it's so lonely up here. From this summit, you can look out to the sea. Almost as if you could look across it. Do you miss home, Louis? Aye. Sometimes I feel that I must go back, even if it means my death. Being in exile has had its merit, but I miss Scotland, my family. Do you not miss San Francisco? No, not really. San Francisco wouldn't be home unless you were there. You, you never been sorry, then, being married to me? Sorry? Oh, Louis, my life has been beautiful. We've had the world together. What more could we ask? I guess we've had wonderful experiences, you and I. And left many friends on every continent. You know, it makes a man feel important. As if he had accomplished something in life. Before he dies. This wind. It gives me a cold chill. Let's go back to the house. No, no, no. Wait. I... I have something to tell you, Fanny. You see, you and I have always lived in the fear of my death. Well, when it comes, I want you to bring me back here to the summit. And when your time comes, my darling, I want you to come back here and sleep beside me. For together we can eternally look out to the sea, toward home. <laughs> I remember a day or two later, he wrote a verse, and he read it to me. Someday soon, he said, I want you to make a path up the mountain. And when I die, you're to bury me there, upon the summit. And this verse is to be inscribed there, in bronze. Under the wide and starry sky, dig the grave, and let me die. Glad did I live, and gladly die, and I laid me doon we a will. 
This is a verse, your grave for me. Here he lies where he longed to be. Home is a sailor, home from the sea, and the hunter, home from the hill. I guess there isn't one of us but has to admit that at times we get to worrying. We worry about a lot of things, business affairs, our jobs, our future, the future of our country, and the future of the world. And when we pick up the papers and see accounts of the horror of war, when we see that one marriage in three goes on the rocks, when we see reports about juvenile delinquency, we even begin to worry about our own family. Yes, there are many things today that tend to separate a family. That's why we need all the help we can have to bring our families together. There's nothing that will bring a family closer in unity and understanding than the simple, the common bond of trust and faith in God. The simple expression of that faith, the daily practice of family prayer, is the greatest inspiration and example we can give our children. Family prayer can and will bring God's blessing on our home, the blessing of harmony and understanding. Because a family that prays together stays together, and a world at prayer will bring a world at peace. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood Family Theater is brought to you Gene Cagney and Glenn Langan in The Triumphant Exile with Patricia Neal as your hostess. Others in our cast were Carlton Young, Joel Nessler, and Paul Duboff. The Triumphant Exile was written by Dale Newton Whitney with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman was directed for Family Theater by F.J. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who have so unselfishly given of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Gene Baker expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to join us next week at this time when Family Theater will present Audrey Totter, Gene Cagney, and Ronald Reagan in The Kiss of Salome Jane. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>